this goes to uh, my argument uh, that we had similarly where uh, Trump was calling Joe Biden the crookedest, crooked, crooked person you've ever crooked in your crooked life. And uh, the argument being, of course, that if he was that crooked, shouldn't he be in jail by now? If he was the most crooked ever, then it should be easy to find the evidence. But apparently um, they found a lot of criminal activity is the argument. Um, I, I, I don't know if they were just looking at Jim Jordan's emails during his time at OSU or what. We'll find out. Breaking today, Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer is now inviting Hunter Biden to appear at a public hearing along with a few of his business associates, including Tony Bobolinsky and Devin so you're going to have them all there at once? I don't think Archer. so. Now, remember, Hunter and his team, they have been demanding a public hearing for months. Originally, they said that he wouldn't show up for anything other than a public hearing. But now, well, not so sure. After his deposition, Hunter's lawyer said, quote, oh, there's nothing left to say. Oh, there's plenty of questions to ask. So uh, it's to be determined in terms of whether Hunter will show up or not. My guess is uh, that was nothing more at the time than a PR stunt to get him it worked. out of the deposition. Here with the very latest, House. How would it? It couldn't get you out of the deposition unless they, they you knew the Republicans were going to fold and not bring you in in public no matter what. I, I, I think he basically called their bluff is essentially it. And they agreed that there would be uh, a public hearing after oversight committee chairman james comer is with us uh now the the general practice is that if you subpoena somebody they come in they give a, a deposition they give it under oath both republicans mm -hmm. and democrats so my understanding is you get an hour each per side then you go an hour you switch on and off correct that's correct how did that's what actually happened that, how did that go when hunter was in there in your view yeah, you, you, he's not the guy you want to ask, uh, Sean, because he fucking left. I don't know if you guys know. He left. He never asked Hunter Biden a question. He left. He didn't stay the whole time. Here's a good idea. Ask somebody who, who was there the entire fucking time. No, I think it went great. You know, the. Yeah, especially the early, I mean, the beginning went great. The, the first couple of minutes were great. They were awesome. Awesome. Uh, like first half, half hour, a little under half hour was great. Uh, Republicans, uh, we went the first hour. Uh, we Well, you went during the first hour, I think, went out. You asked a lot of questions in that first hour, substantive questions about specific transactions uh, with some of these shady uh, LLCs that the, that the president's son had. And uh, we got him on record. Uh, I'm not going to say yet whether or not uh, we believe the, the truthfulness of what he said about some of the transactions and, and some of the wires and some of the sources of the money. But we did that. And that's what a dep Well, why not? You already released the fucking transcript. Everybody knows what you're talking about. Say so. Call him a liar. If he lied under oath, fucking say so. Just, it should be self- You asked really substantive questions about these transactions, about these shady LLCs. So if you know, then fucking say so. You've, you've interviewed James Biden. You've interviewed uh, Galadzi or whatever his name was. Uh, and Bobolinsky and Devin Archer. You've had all these people under oath, full depositions. Go for it. Positions all about. Then the Democrats had an hour and they spent, they only took 20 minutes of their hour and they were telling them how proud they were, were of him that he uh, overcame his drug addiction and all that. I mean, it was, it was embarrassing how the Democrats treated him. They're not serious. How would you know? Serious about an investigation. They're not serious. Because there was no there there. And also they made a, and they weren't asking him those questions. They clarified a bunch of the bullshit that they were trying to dirty him up with in the first hour and and sank their entire argument. It upset the Republicans so much that when Gates ended up asking a question, he ended up just having to kind of like throw shit around like he was at a hearing. Serious about preventing influence peddling. They're not serious about holding one accountable. Influence peddling. You mean during 2017 when Donald Trump was fucking president and... Biden wasn't, and he still wasn't in business with Hunter. What what influence? But we did that deposition. We got a lot of substantive answers. But yes, you did. You got substantive answers to dipshit questions. What we found was his answers, believe it or not, Sean, are very different from what his associates' answers were. Uh right, because they were talking about what they thought he was doing or saying or thinking, 
and he told you what he was actually doing or saying or thinking. And so, yeah. When asked the same question, and the question's revolving around Joe Biden's involvement. So we want to bring everyone in together uh, and try to iron out the discrepancies in, in testimony. So we brought in, uh, we're going to bring in three of, our, of uh, Hunter Biden's former business partners, as well as Hunter Biden. And uh, hopefully we can uh, figure out uh, what the real truth is and the American people can see it live and, and in a transparent manner. It's not a fucking game show, asshole. He's not going to sit there while Tony Bobolinsky spews his bullshit. And what, what do you want him to do? Get into a fucking shouting match? Go, like, what a bunch of nonsense. Like, obviously, it'd be great TV. I don't, don't get me wrong. Why do I suspect that that was a PR ploy to try to get him out of the deposition? Because you already said you thought that before? And where the real questioning takes place, because a lot... Why would the real questioning take place during a live deposition where you've only got five minutes for each person's questioning and you can you can do point of order and and basically run out the clock why would you wait is that is that the idea that comer left the room during the first hour of the of the private deposition because that's not where the real questioning is and we'll deal with it later. That's that's what you think really happens. A lot of things probably that you've been asking him behind closed doors under oath are not things that maybe the public could know about. Uh, so what? Oh, oh, you mean the people, the public that can't what read? Why don't you tell us about it, motherfucker? Why don't you tell us? He's sitting right there. Ask Comer what the what it, what the any of the questions the Democrats asked in the second hour. What was it? What was, what was the look on people's faces? Ask him that. Or how about this? Fuck the Democrats. Ask him about the second hour questioning the Republicans did, and how what what the what the air in the room is. Help him. Ask him to paint the picture of it, Sean. Let how about that? How about let, let him walk you through, bring you really into it. You know, like you were there, even though he wasn't. So I I think it's doubtful. Uh, now I understand the issue of criminal referrals has come up. Are you prepared to bring criminal referrals to some of the people involved in this uh, family endeavor, if you will? I'm very prepared, Sean. Uh, the, the With what? The purpose of this investigation was to get the truth to the American people. And, and uh, so far, the truth has been you don't have any evidence. Then hold people accountable for wrongdoing. And we found a lot of wrongdoing. We found a lot of criminal activity. Oh, yeah? Criminal activity? What do you mean, like criminal cosplay or they were just a bunch of criminals playing squash or what? Involve uh, multiple people involved in these schemes. <laughs> what do you mean, Devin Archer and, and Galazi or whatever, the, like who are going to jail for defrauding Indian tribes? So we're going to do what we can to hold them accountable, you know. Uh-huh. At the end of the day, what does it for accountability look like? Yeah, I agree. This is what accountability looks like. What do you mean? It looks like criminal referrals it looks like referring people to the department of justice it looks like it it's not but it looks like it and uh, if merrick garland's department of justice won't take uh, any potential criminal referrals seriously then maybe the next president uh, with a new attorney general will uh, at the end of the day mm -hmm. my goal has always been accountability and i think that's how you actually hold people accountable look yeah accountable for um for um Accountable. For, uh, there was a thing. There was um, hold them accountable for. Oh, fuck. I don't. It happened. I remember it happened in 2017, and I I remember you hold. You got to hold politicians. Obviously, none of them were politicians at the time, but you got to hold people in who have influence. You didn't have any influence because Trump was president, and he certainly wouldn't listen to Joe Biden for fuck's sake. Um, you, you had to hold them accountable for. Yeah. We've got to set an example uh, for people that... Oh, you do. Well, you certainly do. It's your fantastic example of a, a whiffling, of a wiffle ball swing and a miss. That's what... You, just... Yeah. Just not hitting shit. Just gutter ball after gutter ball after gutter ball. Great example. What not to do commit crimes and in addition to the crime sean what we found is a cover-up uh, well i mean obviously um 
you found more cover up than crime because you haven't actually found any crimes. I would like to name names of people that were involved in the cover up. Uh, Go ahead. Look, the Bidens have been investigated by the Securities and Exchange Commission, by the IRS, by the FBI, by multiple U.S. attorneys in multiple districts within the Department of Justice. During the Trump administration. But yet nothing no. ever happened. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's all that lack of evidence thing. Fuck. We need to hold people in the government accountable because we have government agencies. We spend a lot of money uh, paying these investigators, uh, paying for these investigations. <laughs> uh huh. And they and if they can't find a crime, they should just make one. And people should be held accountable. We should not have a two tier system of justice in America. I agree. Trump needs to go to jail. Thanks. We we finally agree on something. And by looking at all the Biden activity, it's activity. It's obvious we do have a two-tier just, uh, just criminal justice system in America. Yeah, well, that's just because you can attack, I guess, private citizens using the power of Congress and, and, and protect Trump while he's president. Is that what you mean? Can, can you explain his... <laughs> Careful. Careful. I'm going to go with no answer on the WhatsApp message. Uh, I believe it. He said that he was out of his mind, either high mm -hmm. on drugs or drunk at the time. I've looked at the message many times. It yeah. seems fairly coherent for somebody that's claiming to be out of their mind or high on on drugs or or or, you know, stoned out of their mind or drunk. Uh, and it's. Well, he was a he, he was a functional alcoholic. I'll give you it's that. It's interesting because my understanding is he didn't remember a single thing. Didn't remember uh, if he sent the message. Didn't even know if the message really came from him. Yeah. Uh, but he did remember one thing: that his father wasn't there when he sent the message. I find that highly suspicious. He Why? That would be kind of the big element of it. He, was, he knew he was making promises that weren't true or he was making threats that weren't true would be the idea. Got everything else about the message except the fact that Joe wasn't there. That I remember. Yeah, he played the drug card often when he would get backed in a corner. Uh, what the fuck do you guys play about him? Jesus Christ. You're the ones showing a picture of him smoking in a fucking bathtub all the time. He never pled the fifth, but when he didn't want right. to answer a question, he said, look, I was high. I was on drugs. I can't. Right. Just like he said in his memoir, just like he said in every interview. Can't remember anything, but I do remember my dad wasn't there. He went on to say when, when pressed further in the deposition, and you can do that in the deposition. That's why I wanted to do the deposition first. You, you're not constrained by that five minute clock in a, in a committee. Right. And that's what Sean seems to not understand that, you know, that he would avoid one and you can't get into the deeper questions during this part. He, you're just... Thank you for pointing out that you, this is where you get into the deeper questions when you can't do that in front of the, which is what Sean seemed to flip flop right then because he's, uh, what's the, what's the phrase? Uh, hold on. I think it's here somewhere. I agree. I'm a dope. There you go. Midi hearing. And, and we said, well, you know, how do you remember that your dad wasn't there, but you don't remember sending the message? He said, well, I don't believe I sent it to that particular Chinese person. That that last name, that's a common name in China, and I think I sent it to another person. But what's odd, you look at the, the at the WhatsApp stream, and that person kept responding back to, to Hunter Biden. They were communicating back and forth. It's obvious. And at the end of the day, th what Hunter Biden was doing was extorting money from that Chinese national. Okay, if he's extorting money, from the Chinese national, then they certainly don't have power over him. Let's just establish that. So either he's being blackmailed and they're being puppeted by the Chinese, or this motherfucker is strong arming Chinese nationals. Which normally, if if like if Trump bragged about it, you motherfuckers would be going, that see that strength. He stole from the, the our enemies and and told them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> Right? That would be the idea. Days after that WhatsApp message, the $5 million was transferred into his bank account. So uh, for Hunter Biden to say he didn't remember sending the message or he sent it to the other person, but his dad wasn't. It wasn't sent to his bank account. Again, you're misstating the thing. Yeah. There, that's all he remembers. Uh, you know, no one in America and, would believe that. And, and that money was. Sent well, here, that's the great part, though. We don't have to worry. We don't have to believe it or not believe it. You've got the evidence. Right? 
There's, all, there's like evidence we're up to our eyeballs. There's evidence ever criminal activity. Even the title of this, we found a lot of criminal activity. You found it. I don't have to believe it. Nobody has to believe. It's not about belief. What is this fucking church? It's this is the court of law. This is law of man shit. This is law and order. Gun gun. This is. I don't have to believe shit. You got the receipts? Let's see it, motherfucker. And only days later, if my That's memory right. serves me right. Probably does Correct? That's correct. That's correct. Well, well, let me then ask you this question, because I think this is important. What do you mean, if your memory serves you? Like, you just repeated what he said. And by the way, he was arguing about the money being transferred for the deal. You put the seed in money in or I'm not moving further on this fucking deal and you've been wasting my fucking time. That's the argument that's being made in that WhatsApp message. If you don't come through on this, I've already started building relationships on the idea that we're actually going to create this terminal and this is actually going to fucking happen. And if you guys don't live up to your end of the bargain, I'm fucking done with you. And everybody I know is going to be done with you. And my dad is going to shit talk you to everybody if they ever ask about what, whatever happened to that deal your son was making with that thing. I'm going to let him know that you're a piece of shit and you don't live up to your side of the uh, bargain. Click. That's essentially the argument that was happening. So, of course, it, all the money showing up five days later is that the deal started. It wasn't even their fucking money. They didn't get to keep it. It was investment money. It was seed money. It only became Hunter's money for the legal services that he gave in forming the company in the first place, which is what Bob Alinsky spissed about because he wanted more of it and he also wanted more votes and more control than anybody else in the company, which is fucking hilarious. But even after that, the rest of the money didn't end up going into their accounts or they didn't get to keep it until it fell through because the Chinese company would not set up an American subsidiary. Can you confirm and has your committee confirmed uh, whether or not Hunter was at Joe's house and whether Joe was there at the time that the messages went back and forth? Well, that's uh, that should be an easy one, right? If you look at the laptop, uh, that... Nope. Doesn't work that way. particular day, there are pictures of Hunter in the house on that particular day. Now, we, we haven't confirmed whether or not Joe Biden was at the house, but it was. That would be a no. But also, what the, uh, yeah, first of all, there is no laptop. Uh, secondly, the, it, he doesn't actually cop to that message being real. But the argument, you know, if it happened, it was about those kind of things. That's the point he was trying to make. He didn't remember making it specifically, but that's the problem with, with, digital files that have been fucked with. Some of it's real, some of it's completely fake, some of it's partially fake. All they do is add a couple sentences here, do other stuff like that. And all none of the pictures on the laptop have any fucking metadata. None of it. This whole bullshit, like, here's a picture of him from that day. Bullshit. No, you don't. Hunter Biden was at Joe Biden's house that particular day, according to pictures on the laptop. So, you know, the that's not a source. No, he was that. No, he wasn't. There's no metadata. There's no like he's been at the house before and after and during and whenever it doesn't matter. Evidence would point that there's a high possibility that doesn't work. <laughs> I it would be real easy to figure out that Joe Biden was, in fact, sitting beside his son. But Hunter said uh, under oath that even though he was high and on drugs, he couldn't remember anything except that his dad wasn't sitting beside him when he said that. He remembered lying. Message. That's very convenient for his father, yeah. isn't it? Well, not if you guys ever find evidence that shows he was home on that day. And since he was a former vice president, there's a shit ton of information as to where he was and when he was at that particular house or another house or uh, out of town or across the other side of the country giving speeches or what have you. One would think. Uh, pretty Very amazing. All right, we'll look forward. We're gonna wait for those criminal referrals and see what- Yeah, wait for them. It, it just keep waiting. You know what I mean? You don't have to- You, you, you don't wanna wait for the evidence first? Yeah, I mean, just if you're gonna wait for something, I would wait in stages.